Sit back and get ready for the facts about fugu. As a scuba diver in Japan, I see literally hundreds of these fish on every dive. While it's certainly true that the poison contained in fugu is one of the deadliest toxins in the world, the risk to diners is actually quite low, and I'm going to tell you why. Historical facts. The pufferfish, or fugu, takes its name from two Chinese characters, meaning river and pig, because they found these fish predominantly in the Yellow River near the mouth near the ocean. So they considered it a river, and they thought it looked like a pig. So, river pig. River pig. It's quite a humble name, isn't it? But I guess it's kind of fitting. Here's a question. Why did they start eating this fish anyway? Is my big question. And that's why I made my video, The Second Guy to Eat Fugu. I mean, there are lots of other fish in the sea. Literally millions. What was the fascination with this one? And the thing is, think about it. For all those varieties, all that variability, and how many hundreds of years would it take to perfect eating that fish? Mastering all the knowledge to not poison yourself and die. Think of all the people, hundreds, possibly even thousands of people died in the cultivation of this one food. That's a lot of trouble to go through. That's a lot of genes out of the gene pool. There must have been something very rewarding. I've had it. It's, a, it's an okay fish. It's not to die for. The first person to eat here and there and die, I can totally understand we all make mistakes with the unknown. But the people after that who knew this was a dangerous fish and still went on to eat, that's what I find interesting. The second and third person on. And this is how I imagine it might have happened. Hi. Hi. Hey, silly question, but what year is it in this skit? Mate, this skit is so far back in time, I don't know what year it is. Something like 2,000 years ago, back in the Jomon period of Japan. Do? Sounds like the context, setting, and costumes in this skit are all bullshit. Totally. Times are tough. This is the only gig I could get. Same here. Holy cultural appropriation, Batman. Or maybe it's whitewashing. I don't even know. Yeah, I hear ya. I feel like Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai. Alright, catch you later. Night later. Uh, I'm still thinking. What are you having? I'll give this a new fish a try. I like the name, Fugu. Fugu onegeshimasu! Oh, you're the first one to try! Very lucky. Uh, here you go. Thank you. Wow, that looks unpleasant. What are the chances of that happening again? I'll have the same thing. Fuku onegeshimasu! Uh, here you go. Thank you. Jeez, maybe I should stop sucking this food. Hey, chef. How's that new fugu doing? Uh, it's a bit strong. Ooh, sounds mysterious. I'll have that. Throughout its history, fugu has had its ups and downs of popularity and legality. To this day, the Japanese emperor is prohibited from even touching fugu, apparently. I checked around, apparently that's true. The poison. What makes the fugu so poisonous is a toxin called tetrodotoxin, which is one of the deadliest neurotoxins on the planet. It's thought, but I think still debated, that this toxin comes from bacteria that the fugu ingests and absorbs. This poison is shared by other animals on the planet, mainly the blue-ringed octopus, which is a famous little critter. Now, this poison works on us by being a paralytic. So it, it paralyzes the voluntary muscles only. So what happens is you would go paralyzed, your heart would be still beating and you would suffocate because your lungs would stop working. These symptoms usually set in within four to six hours of consumption. If a patient survives 24 hours, they should survive with no residual effects. At the moment, there's still no antidote for this poison and they will put the person on a ventilator uh, to assist their breathing. Historically speaking, more people used to die of this poisoning than today. 
talk about the statistic later. And when somebody died of fugu poisoning, they would traditionally set that person's dead body in a room with a relative for two to three days to make sure the body didn't wake up. Because it can happen that a person is put into such a low coma-like state where respiration and heartbeat is so low that they're actually still alive. And that comes to the next point that apparently, this isn't confirmed, but it's debated, that in Haiti, uh, fugu poison is a main ingredient or an ingredient uh, to make somebody into a zombie. So it's kind of the false death and other chemicals, they thought hallucinogens, uh, when the person awakens are kind of giving them brain damage or makes them open to suggestion. Apparently the fugu poison plays a part in the zombification process. Which fugu are eaten and which are poisonous and what are the poisonous parts? Worldwide there are about 120 species of pufferfish. In Japan there are mainly two that are eaten. The torofugu or the tiger fugu which is the main one and then there's the mafugu which I've never had and I maybe I've never seen, I don't know. How is it eaten? It's eaten all kinds of ways. The most popular way is sashimi, which is sliced really thinly. You can almost see through it. It's also eaten in like a nabe, which is a soup. It can be grilled or fried, eaten in a salad, smoked. Which parts are poisonous? Here's the tricky part. This varies by the species and by the sex of the fish, which is hard to tell. Even the species is hard to tell. When I was doing the searching for this today, looking at, for example, mafugu, there are like six different kinds of mafugu. They all look the same. So it's incredible. So as I said, the skin, the eyes, the intestines, uh, the gonads, and the liver. Now the funny thing about the liver is apparently the liver is delicious and it's also poisonous. Hey, sewer rat may taste like pumpkin pie, but I never know because I wouldn't eat the filthy mother. So what has happened in history, how a lot of these people have died, is by eating parts of the liver and the chef. The, the, now this is maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Nowadays this is highly Ill illegal. But the chefs used to give customers, customers that they knew, some part of the liver. And he would judge, oh, this is not enough to kill someone. It's enough to give them like the effect and maybe even tingling. In the link here, there is actually a personal account of someone who had fugu poisoning and survived. In fact, their whole group that he was with had fugu poisoning from eating liver. And they all survived, I believe, but they were paralyzed. <laughs> so it's said that a good chef can, can cross-contaminate just enough to give you some sensation on the tongue or fingers and yet not kill you. My, my personal research and personal experiences, that would be taking a huge chance. And nobody's doing that these days, maybe in the past, but that's not going to happen these days. Death statistics. What's the real deal and the real risk? So according to the government statistics that I found, between 1996 and 2006, there are like something up to six deaths a year. Like only a total of 44 cases, and some of them were debated actually. And of all those, only one happened in a restaurant. Who were all the rest? Fishermen. Talk about that in a minute. How does one become poisoned? Well, the chefs have to go through this incredible process. It's an 11 year process for them to get certified to be able to serve, prepare, and serve fugu. Some years of that are in an apprenticeship, and then there's a course, and tests, and practical tests, and written tests. So with all that preparation, how do people uh, die? As I mentioned before, it's mostly fishermen. The only ways to be poisoned in a fugu restaurant now that I know of would be one by cross-contamination. So it was not prepared properly. In other words, some poison part touched or contaminated a non-poison part or the knife or a dish or something cross-contaminated. From what I've seen, that's pretty rare. What also could happen is someone forgets to remove a poison part. Oddly enough, that happened not too long ago. I think it was 2006 or 2009. I read about some store that did not remove all the parts and they had to call up, recall customers. Another thing that could happen that has happened in the past, not going to happen so much anymore, is someone giving his customers the liver to try or to eat because he knows they love it. Not going to happen anymore. Liability is much too high. I don't see how that could happen from a licensed chef. That's just risking your whole livelihood. What does happen is the fisherman. Fugu, because it has to be prepared by someone who spent 11 years of their life studying, it's expensive. And so a fisherman is like, wow, you know, I, it's really easy to get all over the place. So you can, you can catch them. Fishermen might convince themselves they know what he or she is doing and, you know, cut it up, eat it, and make a deadly mistake. A deadly mistake in judging what the species is, what the sex is, what the part is, cross-contaminated either by direct contact, a knife, a dish, a fork, who knows what, and 
So it's something like 99% of the people who get poisoned by fugu poisoning are fishermen. Non-poisonous farmed fish. They actually farm non-poisonous fugu now. So because the fugu come from the bacteria, which is in the fugu's natural environment, in an artificial environment, that bacteria does not get into the fugu, so they're non-poisonous. Those fish I found are not so popular still. I mean, they've been around for, I think, almost 20 years. And the problem is twofold. Uh, one is it's, it's even more expensive than the normal fish. The literature seems to suggest that people like the potential danger of having a poisoned fish. And I'm guessing three, probably, there are something like 800 fugu chefs in Osaka alone. Osaka probably has the most, but Osaka, 800. They probably have kind of a powerful union. I'm guessing there might be some pushback against the commercialization of the non-poisonous fish. So because of that, apparently, fugu, Japan-wide, is not that popular as it is. It is popular regionally, like Osaka and further down south. The farm fish has had even less success being popular. My experience in Osaka. When I lived in Osaka, occasionally I would have fugu. And I would go, actually the background behind me is Osaka, the area where I would eat. You see that great big uh, fugu belly? That that's, was my favorite area. I, I lived in that area for several years and that's where some of the more famous uh, fugu restaurants are. And I had a couple parties there. And one of them, actually my first big party, my first fugu experience, was everything fugu. Fugu sashimi started off, fantastic, loved it. Uh, fugu nabe, right, the soup, fantastic, loved it. Fried, loved it. And then at the end of the night came the part I did not love so much. It's a warm sake with dried fugu fins in there. And it makes like <laughs> sake fugu tea. And I, you know, it was at the end of the night, I'd, I'd already had a lot of drinking, I'd eaten a lot, and I brought that, and that was just like this fishy sake soup, and the fins are still in there, and that, that was not a good end of night, nightcap drink, that wasn't working for me, I, I, I don't remember if I, if I finished drinking that or not, but I hope not. Okay, I've got some resources in the bottom, some links that you might want to check out. I know that lots of foreigners ask me about fugu and they think it's super, super dangerous, which it is if you eat the wrong parts. However, today it's so safe and the incidence of diners being poisoned, it's, as my son told me, he saw on a Joe Rogan episode, you have more chance of dying from choking on a hot dog than from dying of fugu poisoning. It depends how, how many hot dogs you eat and how much fugu you eat, right? So uh, if you eat a lot of hot dogs, <laughs> maybe your chances would be higher. All right, thanks for stopping in. Those were the facts about fugu. Catch you next time.